today we are going to be making a very simple top inspired by Madison Bear's um, outfit. So I made a poll on my Instagram and I got over 500 people who wanted to learn how to make this and I decided to go for it. So uh, today we are going to be knitting and I'm going to be using my Click bamboo needles. These are uh, needles that I purchased from Hobby Amians. I'll be leaving their uh, details in the description box below. So I'm going to be using five millimeter uh, knitting needles. I wanted to show you a few details about the needles. This is how they come. They come in a pack and there is a size from 3.5, 4, 4.5, then the 5, which are these ones that I'm going to be using. 5.5, 6, um, 7, and 8 millimeter knitting needles. So these needles are connected with a cord. I have one of the cords here, which I'm going to be connecting with the ones that I'm going to be using. And I made sure that I kept all the details that came with the bag so I could share with you guys. So that's how the inside of the bag looks like. This uh, set goes for about $118, which is about 550,000 Uganda shillings, if anyone is considering to purchase. And uh, behind there's a zip where you can store your cords. The cords come in different lengths. And then um, there are these rubber, things i don't know what to call them but they help you to attach the cords if your hands are slippery but i don't use those so yeah this is how the set looks like and if you'd like to consider purchasing they are 118 dollars from hobbyam so yeah so i'm going to be connecting my cord so you just insert it and then turn it. Once you twist it, it can't come out. And then you do the same on the other side. And we are good to go. This is what we are going to be using for our project. And for the yarn, um, so I accidentally threw away the packaging of the yarn, but this is the yarn that we are going to be using and it's from Circulo. I have my crochet books, yarn books lying around so I can keep track of the yarn that I used. So this is the yarn that we are going to be using and um, we are going to be using color grey. So for those who don't know how to knit, I'm going to really take it slow so that you can learn something from there. and. Also, uh, for those who know, this is going to just be a walkover because we're going to be using the gutter stitch. So you will also need a measuring tape to take the widest part of your bust measurement, then a darning needle to weave in your ends, and also a pair of scissors. You will also need a, f a crochet hook of any size. I'll be using my 4.5 millimeter hook, but any size can work. This is the one that's going to be making the chain, that's going to make the strap for the top. So let's jump into the video. We are going to start off by making the long tail cast on. So for those who watched my Kylie Jenner inspired top, um, I demonstrated this process. You leave a long tail and then um, you make a slip knot like that. Then the tail is at the front side of your work and the working yarn is the one to this side. So this is the tail. You can see it ends here. It's the one on this side of your thumb. And you're going to hold your yarn like this insert your hook sorry your needle i'm so used to crochet but i'll get used to the descriptions so this is my tail and this is my working yarn so you're going to go to this side 
and then scoop the working yarn. This counts as, a, as the very first stitch, so we have two here, and then do it again, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So I'm going to do a total of 30 stitches on my needles. So um, you're going to determine how thick you want your top to be because this is the, the thickness of the top. So we have 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So I have my 30 stitches on my needles. So those are 30. And now we are going to start working our very first row. I'm going to leave the tail alone. So now all I need is the working yarn. This I'm going to abandon it. If possible, I can cut it so that it's a bit shorter than what it is right now. Because if it's too long, it's going to just um, distract me the whole time. Now you're going to get your second needle. Remember, we are working with we are working with circular needles. So I'm going to grab my working yarn, and then I'm going to tension it like this, just like that. And you're going to start to knit. My middle finger is holding the stitch that's about to get off the needle. So you're going to insert your needle here and you're going to grab this yarn here and then slide that needle off. Then you go in again you grab the yarn on the other side and slide it off. So the very good thing about these needles it's, is that they are really, really smooth. They're not rough at all. And they make working with them very easy. So this is the continental knitting style, which I have always been dodging, thinking it was hard. And recently I just picked up my needles and tried it and somehow it worked out and it helped me pick up my speed so we are going in and grabbing the yarn at the back of our um, left needle so for those who watched my Kylie Jenner top you know that I was using English style knitting and yeah, it was great, but I couldn't pick up speed because I had failed to find a comfortable way to tension my yarn. So that's what we are going to do all the way across. So we are on our very last stitch and you'll go into it and grab the working yarn. So that marks the end of row one. 
So now we are going to row two and this project is a one row repeat until we get the length of the top that we want. So for row two, you're going to grab your needle. You're going to move the needle with the stitches into your left hand. And now the right needle is empty. And we are going to repeat the same exact process. So this is our very first stitch. You're going to go in and grab the working yarn and slide the stitch off the left needle onto the right needle. And that's all you have to do. I believe um, by the end of this project you'll be more comfortable with your gutter stitch. Um, this is the process that I went through to actually master this because I was learning how to knit and I didn't know exactly what to do so I decided to make a scarf and actually finish it. I'll be attaching some photos and by the time I got done with the scarf I was more comfortable with the stitch and I had actually picked up speed I'm very sorry for using a dark color, but I wanted to achieve something close to what um, Madison Beer was wearing. So that's why I use this gray color that's close to black. And also the fact that it's a neutral color and you can always wear it on different occasions and with different outfits. So that's it. We are going to row three, you switch over, make this hook face this side and make sure your yarn is always at the back, at the back of your left needle. Let it not be here. It should always be at the back. And then the right needle is the one that moves the stitches to from the left to the right. So this hand is literally doing nothing. It's just holding the stitches in place and also holding the needle that has the stitches. And then the right hand, which is my dominant hand, it's um, is doing all the work for me. So I would advise when you're working, you, you have to rest this hand on maybe a seat or a cushion so that uh, you, it doesn't feel worn out. That's uh, what I do to get a comfortable uh, process while knitting. I rest this hand somewhere so that this is the only hand that's moving. Otherwise, um, you'll feel fatigued in your left hand if it's just in the air. So this is how to knit. The gutter stitch can be achieved either by just purling and you don't knit at all. You just purl, purl every row or you knit all the rows. So you go with the easier way. If purling is easier for you, you can just substitute every time I say knit, you just do the purl stitch. But knitting is easier for me, so I went with that um, option. So I'm going to continue doing this until I get a length that can go around my bust measurement. So my bust measurement is between 32 and 33 inches. And uh, the bust measurement you're considering is the widest part of your bust. That is the one that you're considering. So I'm going to go ahead and keep working this until um, I have some rows ready and then I'll get back to you and show you how to determine the length of the top and then we shall also wind up. Okay, 
this is what it looks like you can see the texture has already started forming and it's exactly the same as the top the inspiration that i showed you at the beginning of the video so we are going to continue doing this until our top builds up and then i'll come back and show you what to do next so i went all the way to um a total of about 134 stitches and the way to count that is you count these ridges those ones and each ridge has two rows so i did a total of about 67 67 ridges here so times two which is 134 so this is what my work looks like and it can stretch to 32 inches but when not stretched it's about um about 25 inches so that means you're going to do uh, your bust measurement less by about seven inches so that when it stretches it's going to go to your bust measurement this is the way to have it fully fitted about around your bust so for me that was 134 rows so the thickness is about eight inches when it's not stretched and remember um when um, when your top stretches like this that means the thickness is going to become a bit narrower so keep that in mind so now that i have the number of rows that i need we are going to start to bind off um, binding off is still a challenge to me but i'll get there with time i'm still practicing so we are going to knit our very first stitch which is this one knit and then knit our second stitch and then pull this first stitch over the second like that so knit the next stitch and then pull the second one over the first one make sure you don't drop your stitches then knit the, the next and then pull the first one over the second one I'm still struggling a bit but I know I'll get there with time I'm not on pressure so I'm going to continue doing that every time you get two stitches on your right needle make sure you pull the previous stitch over the new stitch sorry like that then knit now we have two stitches that means it's time to pull this over like that and that means we are binding off you can see we are finishing up our row our project sorry so I'm going to continue to do this all the way across It can really get challenging to bind off but hopefully I'll get there by the end of the week so let me go ahead and do that and I'll meet you guys back when I'm done 
So I've made it all the way across and I have only one stitch left on my left needle. So I'll knit it and then pull the previous stitch off just like I've been doing before. So I've hustled my way across. So I'm done with this and now I'm going to just pull through this tail of yarn. You can cut your yarn from this point and then pull it through and fasten off. So that means we are done with the general shaping of the top. And now it's time to do the little details. So you can see it's a bit short, but when stretched, it will get to its desired length. So the next thing that we are going to do is to get our darning needle and we weave in these ends. And now we are going to go on to our next step, which is finalizing our top. So we are going to get a crochet hook. I am going to be using my 4.5 millimeter hook to make a very simple chain. So you start with a slip knot, pull through and pull through again, and then you pull the tail. So that's my slip knot. And now you're going to make a chain a very long chain of about maybe a hundred to a hundred and fifty. I'll let you know when I'm done so that uh, you know how many that I did for mine. So I did a total of a hundred and fifty chains all together. Now you're going to chain one and leave a tail. And cut your yarn. Now the next thing that you're going to do is to get your darning needle again and you're going to pass it through that long tail that you've left. So um, we are going to be passing this um, tail through the edges of our top all the way to this side. So decide which side is your upper side. I can't take any side. I think maybe this will be my upper side. So you're going to start from up here. <coughs> you're going to fold over your work like this. And then you're going to start from up here. I want to do a random placement because I can't see the stitches clearly. So I'm just eyeballing and going into in and out of that space. You can see that distance between the stitches is almost uniform. In and out. In, out. In, out. In, out. In, out. You're going to want to stop when you're like on top of the of your top like on the outside part in out and then you pull your chain through like that and now you're going to go on to this side so you're going to go in out in out, in, out, in, out. And you're going to do that all the way to the top. Out, in, out. So you're going to want to end your row when you're out. 
find a way to do that out and you're going to pull this chain through and at this point you can see maybe I would have done some more chains maybe 200 to just make it possible to play around with those chains I can go ahead and add some chains to this tail this tail that I've been using for the dunning needle so I'll go into my very last chain insert my hook and then I continue to chain until I'm done with that tail because I want my straps to be a little bit longer than what they are right now I'm not happy with the length and that's it so you can go ahead and attach some beads here if you would wish and then this marks the end of this top so you can see when you're styling it you can always pull this so that it's a bit tighter and then you can tie the straps here then take them to the neck that's really up to you you can have your knot on your chest and then up your neck then you can just leave it like this and then up your neck so it's really up to you this top can be styled in several different ways and i hope you learned a lot from this tutorial thanks you guys for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content and i will see you in my next video bye